can agree and believe God's word and confess that over our life, our health, our finances, our work, our school, every area of our lives. And, and today, I want to build on that. I want to build on that. And this is going to be believe part two. Believe part two. And the message today and the message next Sunday are going to go hand in hand. It's believe and union with Christ. I want to encourage you to look in John 15 and John 17, even the book of Ephesians, at all the times that God's word says over and over again that we are in Christ. What, what does that mean? What does that mean to you and I? We're going to get into that. But we've got to start today with the word believe. And this is a word for those that have gone through suffering, grief, and trauma, or will in the days ahead. It's a word of hope. It's a word of encouragement, a redirection for the healing of our souls because our soul is the vessel that God fills. And, and I'm speaking firsthand from the trauma that I have felt. I don't know what better word to use at different times throughout my life, most particularly the 12 days that I spent in the intensive care unit unable to communicate with my family, unable to, isolated and alone. Please, I, I, I need to say this. Nothing that I'm going to say today, I pr it's not um, to say that I've experienced something that you haven't. It's to make a connection. I'm going to kind of pull my robe off today and tell you about some areas of trauma that I've gone through that at the time I just put a lid on it. I went through those times and, and I felt like, you know, you've got to tighten up, you've got to be a man, you've got to go on through. And it left wounds and scars. So they've told me, you know, that my lungs could heal, but there may be some scarring. Okay? Well, when we go through seasons of trauma, Seasons of suffering that the Bible says are going to come, it can leave a scar on you. And, 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 and God's been dealing with me to bring healing to some of those unresolved areas that I just kind of put a, a garbage can on. And, and said, I got to move on. I, I can't stop here any longer. The reason that I tell you that is because I believe that there are some people here today that have gone through trauma. You've gone through a season of suffering with your family or with a situation at work or a situation around you or you personally. And I want to take that first step because God wants to bring healing to that area of your life and the first step today is believe and next Sunday we're going to talk about our union with Christ and how that brings healing but you may feel today that you come and you're empty and you've lost your connection with Christ as I've gone through some of these times of trauma I felt dazed. I felt literally like somebody had hit me with a bulldozer and I, I, I don't know where I am. Maybe that's how you feel today. I got good news for you. There's hope. There's encouragement. There's healing. And I'm going to point you of how God wants to bring healing to your soul and reconnect you with Christ. Let's look, if we could, at John chapter 15, beginning with verse 5, and then we're going to look at John 17, beginning 
with verse 20. Look in John 15 as we read this passage how many times Jesus says, in me, in me. Read this with me out loud if you can through your mass. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now move over to John 17. We'll get into John 15 a lot deeper next Sunday, so don't miss that message. Read this with me, John 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. My, I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. May God speak to us through the reading of his word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just come today asking you to do what only you can do. Holy Spirit of God, come. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. We pray for more of your presence, more of your power, more of your anointing, and more of your grace in our lives. And Lord, I thank you for the healing that you're bringing about in my soul, in my heart, and in my life, and that you've allowed me to go through these things that somehow, some way, I could be an instrument of your healing and your grace for those that are going through things today. Holy Spirit of God, do the work that only you can do. I present my body a living sacrifice today that you would use me as an empty vessel longing to be filled by you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. So what's, what's going on? <laughs> you, you feel dazed. You feel empty. You feel that that connection with Christ is not what it once was. What's caused it? Well, let me tell you that many things can cause it. First of all, the blistering pace of life that we're living today. We're now living at the speed of a swipe or a like. We can't even respond to a text with a text. A sentence is too cumbersome. We're too busy. Everybody says that they're busier than they've ever been. Musician friends don't have time to play much music anymore. Gardeners don't have time to plant their garden. We're sucked into a pace of life that nobody is enjoying. That can contribute to the loss of our connection with Christ. How about the deluge of media? Four hours a day on an app, 
on our phone or six hours a day viewing media. We're snagged into every new notification. We're enchanted by the endless social media circus of love and hatred and anger and beefing on social media. And then we have the tragedies of the entire world delivered right to our smartphone on a minute-by-minute basis. I, I realized when I got out of the hospital, I couldn't even talk about what had happened without weeping. I, I realized, and there were TV programs that I couldn't watch anymore because I literally felt that pain in the depths of my soul. The latest COVID deaths and economic disasters being delivered to your smartphone minute by minute. And then we've always had our own personal struggles and challenges and heartbreaks. It's hard on our soul. It's traumatizing when we are exposed. Let me tell you something that I've learned. When we're exposed to a traumatic event, even on TV, our mind, our, our subconscious mind is not able to differentiate that activity from the truth. And we it can experience trauma by just watching a TV show. Again, there were times when I first got home that I had to be really very careful about the TV shows that I watched because I could feel the pain of that in my soul. They can traumatize us. This frantic, volatile world constantly wilts our soul. And what I want to talk about today is how God wants to bring healing to our souls but we have to empty it of all the garbage that we've allowed to be put in and that it is filled up with. And then we have to reunite with Christ. It's no coincidence that one of the most important books on our world and what technology is doing to us is called The Shallows, what the Internet is doing to our brain. It says we're losing our ability to focus and pay attention longer than just a few minutes. We live at the depth of a text, the swipe, the like. It's a spiritual crisis. But I got good news. God wants to come and restore our lives. He wants to restore our souls. Our souls are the vessel that God fills and we can fill them up with so much garbage, so much trauma, that there's no more place for the presence of God. Or it limits the amount of his presence that we can have. God wants to strengthen and renew our souls, and he longs to give us more of himself. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Get away with me and you'll recover your life and learn to live freely and lightly. But church, we just need to put ourselves in a position to receive the help that God desires to give. Only believe. John Eldridge said and told this story about an old lamp. He said, I had an old desk lamp with a wiggly switch picked up. Thank you, Wes. With a wiggly switch picked up at a garage sale. I had this annoy it had this annoying habit of turning on and off without any rhyme or reason. One moment the room would be lit. The next moment I'd be sitting in total darkness. Now this old lamp was cunning. It wouldn't, do oft, it wouldn't do it often enough to incite replacing it. Most of the time, just enough to ensure its survival, the lamp stayed on. Then it would shut off unannounced as if a toddler had sneaked in and found the switch. Click. This quirky personality trait was particularly irritating during my nighttime reading. 
I'd be caught up in something good, enjoying myself, lost in the story when suddenly, click, darkness. The page was gone. The book had vanished. I was yanked right out of the experience and startled away as if by magic. Of course, the book didn't vanish. The light simply turned off. It had to do with an unreliable switch. It was un. Explainable. How do we explain the on again, off again experience that we have or that others have with God? Sometimes it seems like God is very near, and sometimes it seems like God's gone. I, I said it seems like God's gone. Of course, God's not gone. God never really vanishes. No more than that book that John Eldridge was reading. God is always near. Matthew 28, 20. Jesus said, teach these things to the disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hebrews 13, 15 says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. In Acts chapter 17, verse 28, says, God did this so that men would seek him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. God surrounds us. He's by our side right now, even though we don't always feel him. It can seem to be like a roller coaster that God presents himself and doesn't present himself at different times of our walk with him. And we're left like uh, somebody that's waiting for a 630 bus. We're waiting for God to come back. But God is always there. He's always around us, not only around us, but he's within us. He's within us. You just have to believe. John 14, verse 16, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world can't receive him because it's not looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Say that with me, in you. No, I will no no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you soon. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I'm raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. I love how Ephesians 3, 17 says it. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Look how Paul says it in Colossians 1, 27. For God wanted them to know that the riches and the glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. Christ lives in you. This gives you the assurance of sharing his glory. We're never apart from God. God is around us and within us. But why don't we enjoy the sense of his presence more consistently? Maybe it's not just you. Maybe it's me. Why don't we enjoy the sense of Jesus' presence more consistently? I believe it's because we've got a wobbly light switch on the inside, and that switch is belief. That switch is believing Sometimes I get up in the morning and I feel blah. There's little or no sense of God's presence. 
Sometimes things come over us in the night like anxiety or fear or accusations of the enemy. I've just been choosing to observe the power of believing. I I say to my feelings, feelings, I'm sorry, but you don't define my experience with God. You're off track. God's right here. I've been saying in my prayer time, thank you, Lord, that you're here with me right now. Thank you. I believe that you're with me. Father, I thank you that you're here with me right now. I sat in that hospital room when I didn't feel any tangible sense of God's presence. I said, thank you, Lord, that you're here with me. Thank you that you are a good, good father. Thank you that you're a loving God. Thank you that you're here. You're my deliverer. No matter what the situation or the circumstances look like. Isn't that exactly what the psalmist instructed us to do in Psalm 42 verse 11? He says, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. What was he saying? He was saying to his soul, so I understand that you're not well, but God hasn't abandoned us. I'm going to praise him. My experience with God doesn't have to come and go like a light switch. Belief is a choice. Say that with me. Belief is a choice. Say it with me again. Belief is a choice. Sometimes we wake up and God feels very near and sometimes we get up in the morning and God seems as far away as he could possibly be. And God said, only believe. Only believe and say, Lord, I thank you that you're here with me. What I found out is God's right there. It's what his word says over and over again. It's not based on my feelings. It's based on the truth of God's word. But sometimes I let my emotions take charge of my life or my circumstances overshadow me. And I'm not operating in the position of believing. We wait to be struck by lightning, but belief is a choice. It's an act of your will. So when you get up in the morning and God feels far away, just reaffirm it. God, I thank you that you're here with me. Lord, I thank you that you're here with me in the hospital room when I can't talk to my family. I thank you that you're here. I believe that you're here. I know that you're here. Why else would Jesus have handled Thomas's doubts with a command? Look at John 20, 27. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands reach out and put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Say that with me. And believe. Thomas had to make a decision at that moment that Jesus was waiting to just believe. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him now faith can only be rewarded if it's something that you and I have chosen we don't reward our children for doing chores if we did them for them Belief can't be rewarded. Faith can't be rewarded if it falls down on us from above. Believing is a choice. Faith and trust and belief in God is our most precious possession. And God is committed to deepening and strengthening that relationship. 1 Peter 1 verse 6. I I love this. So truly be glad. There's wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. 
though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise, glory, and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you don't see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. God's not coming and going. Let me just say that again. God is not coming and going. I have a choice to make whether I believe he's there and it takes faith. God wants a strong, unshakable faith so sometimes he withdraws the experience of his presence, not his presence itself, but the experience of his presence, the feeling of it, in order to mature us. Let me just say that again, because this speaks to me. God wants strong and unshakable faith, so sometimes he withdraws the experience of his presence not his presence itself, but the feeling of it in order to mature us. He wants us to choose belief and to exercise it. So how do we grow that faith and that belief that God's presence is in our lives? Let me just pause right there. So there are times where things happen in our lives that would sow seeds of doubt and darkness in our minds that God's really not with us, that God really doesn't care with us, care about us. And those things wound our souls. Those things keep us from receiving more of the presence and the power of God in our lives. As I shared with you, there were times in the hospital where I had no tangible sense of God's presence in the room with me. There have been times when I've come to this pulpit, seasons where there has been no tangible sense of God's presence. I believe we go through those times. And God wants us to put our faith and our trust and our belief in him. Ed Jr. went through, as you all, many of you know, a very serious time of health challenges over a long period of time. And it felt like literally that he would leave his body that our son was no longer there and that he was gone. Uh, There was a season in our lives where Kelly was going through a very hurtful, difficult season. When my dad passed away, Uh, I I cannot tell you the grief that I felt, and for two weeks I couldn't stop crying. But as we would go through those events, it was like I had to put a trash can lid on those areas and just push them down and move on because how much longer can you spend on a situation and you've got to get on with your life And I just want to tell you that God desires to bring healing and wholeness to those areas. And it comes by believing. The first step is by believing. First, we've got to believe that God wants to give us more of himself. Do do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to give you more of himself? But see, the pace of our lives, the deluge of media, the trauma on our phones, the traumas that we go through in our individual lives, sow seeds of doubts in our heart that God really doesn't want to be with us. 
But it's a lie. It's a lie. Listen to his promises and his desires to give us more of himself. Jesus said in Luke 11, 9, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Verse 11. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Say that with me. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? He says that the Holy Spirit is a good gift that God desires to give us. He goes on in John 3, 34. The one that God sent speaks God's words. And don't think that he rations out the Spirit in bits and pieces. The Father loves the Son extravagantly. He turned everything over to him so that he could do what? So he could give it away. A lavish distribution of gifts. That's why whoever accepts and trusts or believes the Son gets in on everything, life complete forever. He said God is not rationing the Holy Spirit in bits and pieces. He loves the Son extravagantly and he's given him the Holy Spirit so that he could extravagantly a lavish distribution of gifts. Whenever, whoever trusts, whoever believes the Son gets everything that's at the Son's disposal. So ask God for more of His presence. Ask Him confidently, believing that it's His will, His desire to give you more of Himself. That's become a daily prayer for me. God, I want more of you. God, I ask for more of your presence, more of your power and grace in my life. Believe that God wants to give you more of himself. Secondly, choose to believe that Christ is already within us and just remind ourselves. Colossians 1.27 says, For God wanted them to know that the riches and the glory of Christ are for the Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you the assurance of sharing in his glory. We're not asking a distant Jesus that's a galaxy away to come and fill us up. He's already here. He's already inside of us. Ask him for a greater measure of his presence and his power within you. So I've just been saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're here with me right now, that you reside on the inside of me. Thank you for that treasure that you've placed on the inside of me as I go about my daily activities so that when the doubts and the storms and the attacks rage, you can remind yourself, thank you, Jesus, that you're here with me. Thank you for your presence. And power that's residing on the inside of me. And third, finally, choose to believe that it's happening. Choose to believe that it's happening. Thank Him. Thank you, Lord, that you're filling me up. Your heart is beating every day, but you don't take your pulse every two minutes. So just say, Thank you, Jesus, for giving me more of yourself. Thank you for filling me with more of you, whether I feel it. Or not. God loves it when by faith you believe that His promises are true. John 17, verse 20, Jesus says, My prayer is not for them alone, meaning the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. A great picture of this uh, came to us from the 70s. Amy's going to put up a picture of three little train cars. There's the engine, which is the cab of fact, the cab of fact, the cab of the truth of God's word. The engine is God's word. The engine is the truth of God's word. The connecting car, the coal car, is the car of faith. And that's believing in God and trusting in his word. And the caboose car is our feelings. It's, it's important that we can't always count on our feelings. We want the facts, the truth of God's word pulling our faith our faith anchor to that and not our feelings controlling our experience. Feelings are wonderful and experiences from God are powerful, but we attach our belief to the truth of God's word so that when the interruption comes, the attack on one of our children or on our family or an unexpected bill, or a meeting to determine our ongoing employment, or a discouraging report from about one of our children, at those moments when we feel ready to flip the switch off and say, God, you're not here, you can say, God, I believe that you're with me. You're a good, good father, and you're right here with me right now. Now, as we close today, if you would like to take this first step, maybe, again, maybe you feel disjointed or far from your relationship with God, if it would be your desire for more of God's presence in your life, I'm going to pray a, a simple prayer, a prayer that I would encourage you to be praying each and every day, and then that basically follows the instruction of this message. I challenge you to do this each day. Let's, let's pray. And if that's your desire, you pray this prayer. Lord, you said yourself, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to them that I ask? I believe that it's your desire and will to give me more of yourself. I ask you, God, to fill me with the full measure of your presence and your power. I ask for more of you, God. I thank you that you are filling me. I thank you, Jesus, for giving me more and more of yourself. I thank you that you're here with me right now. I believe you. I trust you. I worship you. In the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and pray and believe that I have it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we prepare to sing our invitation, could I ask you to stand with me? I want, I want to pause to those that are in the parking lot, to those that are watching online. If you've never opened up your heart to Jesus Christ, this would be a perfect time to do this. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man or any woman opens up that door, I will come in to him and be with him. It's a turning point in every, the life of every human being that's invited Christ in. I, I, I want to pray for you if that's you today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah, just open your heart to him right now. 
Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to come into the very depths of my soul and spirit. I invite you in to bring healing to those wounded areas. I invite you to come in that you would be in me, that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would give me the new life, the abundant life that Jesus Christ promised. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm going to ask uh, our prayer ministry team if they would come and stand here at the altar. If you made that commitment to Christ, I, I want to encourage you if you're here today to tell somebody to come and share that with one of the folks that's here at the altar. Make that commitment. We need to pray for you if there's a need in your life. We want you to know we love you and we're here for you today. As our worship team leads us in our invitation. Me, more of you, less of me. More of you, more of you. Jesus, more of you. of me more of you and less of us lord we pray that you would come in the depths of our heart to fill us with your presence to bring healing from the hurts and the pains and the traumas that life and the enemy 
have brought against us. Lord, help us to recognize those areas that are causing that trauma, to literally shut them out and invite you in to bring the healing work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray all the blessings, the peace, the presence, the power of your Holy Spirit on every heart and every life here today. Send us forth as light into the world and salt on the earth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, church. See you next week.